All right, so the map dealer here, and today I'm going to do another quick video, hopefully quick, on finding the missing zeros if you're given one of the roots. Okay, now, the difference though is that one of the roots this time is imaginary. Now, I know I put a video up earlier for this one, but this is just another example. So I just want to make sure you take a few notes here, okay? When I'm asking for zeros of a polynomial, okay, that's also saying the roots. They're pretty much the same thing. Real zeros are real roots, they are x-intercepts, imaginary zeros, that's when you get the i's, okay? Um, and they're called the imaginary roots. All right, and then I actually wrote a few little quick notes over here, all right? So when you're doing these problems, always check to see if you can factor. Don't forget imaginary roots always come in conjugate pairs, that's huge. And of course, the degree of the polynomial indicates the number of zeros. So in this particular problem, oh my goodness gracious, we're gonna have six roots. Crazy fun. Okay, so here we go. First off, as always, see if you can factor. Well, in this case, actually, I could factor out an X. I know, right? Crazy fun. I have just made this problem that much easier. So I'm going through and I'm kicking out that X out of every single term. And of course, when you factor out an X, remember, you're just taking the power down one. All right, so this leaves me with a 25. Yay, team. That means that, guess what? This is a factor, okay? Which means when I set it equal to zero, oh yeah, that's going to be a root. Okay, so here we go. Now, take the coefficients, line them up. And of course, make sure you're not missing any terms, and I'm not, okay? There's, um, I have a five, a four, a three, a two, a one, and of course, I have the zero. Now, over in the corner, place the four plus three i. So I'm going to slide this guy over. All right, so here we go. A little synthetic action, right? Love this stuff. If you're a little shaky on this, you might want to go back and watch my other video on synthetic division. It's much slower. Here we go. Drop it run it. We're going to drop it again. But when I drop it, remember I'm combining. Negative 8 plus 4 gives me a negative 4 plus 3i. Okay. Now I'm going to multiply 4 plus 3i times negative 4 plus 3i. So I'm actually going to go over here on scrap paper and I'm going to say, okay, you know what? Let me do a little distributing action. Okay. And if you recognize this to be, um, the product turns out to be the difference of two squares, more power to you. But the rest of us, we're going to go through our motions. So it gives me 12i. Kick it in, gives me negative 12i. And that side gives me plus 9i squared. I know you're so excited. Can't even stand it. All right. So goodbye to my 12i's because they cancel each other out. 9i squared. Please, 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 please recognize i squared is a negative 1. So technically, I have a negative 16 minus 9. What the heck? Yes, negative 25. I know that was nothing but exciting. All right. Then... I go ahead and I say, okay, let me just kick this guy out now. Slide over here. Combine down. Gives me zero. Fun fact, four plus three I times zero gives me zero. Slide the one down. Multiply again. And now you're like, dude, is this deja vu? And it might be because these terms comes out to be the same. You already know what four plus three I times negative four plus three I because we did that one over here that I erased. Sorry about that. And that gives me zero. Okay, and you're like, all right, so yay, I got all these I's, right? What the heck, okay? However, don't forget, since I have, let me highlight that, right? An imaginary root, it comes in a conjugate pair. So if 4 plus 3i was a root, wait for it, wait for it, 4 minus 3i is a root. I know, nothing but exciting. So here we go. We drop it, we run it. We drop it, that goes to zero. You got to love that. This comes down, goes to zero, another zero, another zero. This becomes 4 minus 3i. And now when I multiply these two, uh, I lied, that becomes a 1. Look, I was ahead of myself. What the heck am I doing? It must be early. So this becomes 4 minus 3i. That's what goes up here. And that gives me 0. Okay. Oh, and by the way, please don't forget, I'm only using these coefficients. And like I said, if you need to watch one of my earlier videos, please go back and do so. All right. Or rewind this and start over. I don't know. I got nothing. All right, now here we go. You now have a depressed equation with these coefficients. It's not depressed because it's sad. No, no siree, right? Definitely not. All right, it's depressed because it's going to be one degree less than my degree of five. Because remember, the degree of five is what started this whole chain reaction. Because the six, that one factor was factored out. Okay, so anyway, so I have a degree of five, went down to a degree of four, 
which goes down to a degree of 3. So this is actually an x cubed, 0x squared, 0x, and then plus 1. Set it equal to 0, and you might recognize this as a sum of 2 cubes. If you do not, please go back and look at that. All right, remember the factor a cubed plus b cubed. I've said it before, a plus b, a squared minus ab plus b squared. I know nothing but exciting. So now set each of these factors equal to zero, and life is good. Don't forget to solve a quadratic. Of course, you're going to have to break out, yep, a quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. And the whole thing, wait for it, whoops, not that thing, over 2a. Cool. So here we go. a is 1, b is negative 1, and c is 1. Lots of 1s going on. All right. So we take the opposite of b, which is 1, plus or minus square root of negative 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4 times a times c, sitting over 2a. And that's going to give me 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 3 over 2. And now, of course, we got to take our eyes out. I know he's so exciting. So when I kick this guy out, I get 1 plus or minus i square roots of 3 over 2. So check out all the roots we have, right? Let's look at all the roots we have. The very first root we were given, not given, but we factored out was 0, okay? The roots we were given was 1 was 4 plus 3i. Knowing 4 plus 3i was a root, 4 minus 3i had to be a root. And then, of course, we just found these guys, which was negative 1, and we found this one over here. So you might be asking yourself, wait a minute, dealer, where is all this going to come into action, right? Like, when are we actually going to use all these answers? And I know, that's for another video, and it might have something to do with graphing. I know, super excited. All right, this is the math dealer signing out. Have a fabulous day.